Dear friends, welcome to Bond with RK Chemistry YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to explain the last theory in theories of bonding in metals, that is band theory. In 1927, Heitler and London discovered bands in solids. Bands are nothing but a collection of very closely spaced orbitals. The formation of bands can be explained by using hydrogen, by taking hydrogen. If you take hydrogen, the electronic configuration of hydrogen atom is 1s1. You can find a 1s orbital in hydrogen atom. In this diagram, on y-axis you have energy, on x-axis you have number of hydrogen atoms. If you take one hydrogen atom, you can find only atomic orbital that is 1s. Suppose if you take two hydrogen atoms, there is a linear combination of two 1s orbitals of two hydrogen and there is a formation of bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecular orbital. Suppose if you take three, there is a formation of three molecular orbitals, four hydrogens, four molecular orbitals and if you take eight hydrogens, there is a linear combination of eight 1s orbitals and there is a formation of eight molecular orbitals. When you increase the number of hydrogen atoms, there is an increase in number of uh, orbitals and there is a decrease in energy gap between adjacent levels. Here this is the gap between uh, bonding and anti-bonding. When you increase the number of hydrogen atoms, there is a decrease in band energy between energy levels. Suppose if you take a lot of hydrogen atoms, you can find a collection of very closely spaced orbitals. The closely spaced orbitals is named as band. Okay, this is the band uh, formed due to linear combination of uh, 1s orbitals in hydrogen. Suppose if you take another atom, an individual atom which has 1s 2s and 2p orbitals or energy levels. In crystalline solid you can find a very large number of uh, these individual atoms. Then there is a linear combination of 1s orbitals with 1, 1s orbitals. Among 1s orbitals there is a linear combination. Among 2s orbitals there is a linear combination. Among 2p orbitals there is a linear combination. And you will get uh, molecular orbitals very closely spaced molecular orbitals which are formed due to linear combination of 1s, 2s and also 2p. Then you can find a band which was formed due to 1s, which was formed due to 2s and which was formed due to 2p. Here you can find three bands in this crystalline solid. Let us take a, a crystalline solid which has six bands. Among six bands, this is the energy. Among six bands, the first three are filled with the electrons. So these are called as filled bands. And the next three are not filled with the electrons. These are called as unfilled bands. Among filled bands, the inner two bands are called as core bands. Since uh, these are formed by the core orbitals, these are called as core bands and this one is formed due to valency orbitals, valency orbitals, that's why it is called as valency band. Okay, valency band which is a fluid band with the highest energy. Generally, valency band, band is a collection of uh, homo, homos you can say, highest occupied molecular orbitals. If you take unfilled bands, the band which is close to the valency band or next to the valency band is called as conduction band. This is formed due to low moles, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. It's a collection of lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. The energy gap between valency band and the conduction band, this one is very important. This one is called as band gap energy which decides the nature of solid. We know that elements are classified into metals, metalloids and non-metals. 
you can easily distinguish the metals metalloids and non metals by using a band gap energy this is the energy gap between valency band and conduction band here this is the valency band and this is the conduction band and here this is the valency band this is the conduction band in case of metals there is no energy gap band gap energy is zero here there is no gap between vb and cb here there is a overlapping of valency band and conduction band in these two cases the solids can act as a metal suppose if the band gap energy the space between valency band and conduction band is small then uh, the solid can act as metalloid or semiconductor if the gap is very large between valency band and conduction band then the solid can act as non metal generally in semiconductors or metalloids the band gap energy is uh, less than 3 electron volt for non metals the band gap energy is greater than 3 electron volt okay, let us take the semiconductors semiconductors can be classified into intrinsic semiconductors intrinsic uh, semiconductors and uh, extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are these are pure semiconductors are these are in elemental state and extrinsic semiconductors these are doped with uh, some other elements let us take uh, intrinsic semiconductor that is pure uh, silicon it's a intrinsic semiconductor here there is a band gap between uh, valency band and conduction band you can find two bands suppose if you dope 15 group atoms with the pure silicon here there is a creation of a new energy level that is donor level filled with electrons which is close to the conduction band here the donor level filled with electrons the electrons will be transferred to the conduction band here there is a formation of electron in conduction band and hole in donor level due to formation of electron and hole there is a conductivity in n type of conductors since the major charge carriers in this type is or electron that's why these are called as n type semiconductors suppose if you dope pure silicon with group 13 atoms there is a creation of level which is unfilled with electrons that is acceptor level which is close to the valency band here also there is a creation of new band gap energy between valency band and acceptor level the electron in the valency band transfers to the acceptor level and there is a creation of hole in valency band and in acceptor level you can find electrons due to formation of electrons and holes there is a conductivity in this type of semiconductor here the major charge carriers are holes that's why these are called as p type semiconductors this is about band theory thank you